Okay, yep, we are certainly live. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Equine Voices. My name is Ronnie, and I'm so, so excited and so pleased that tonight's interview is going to be with my, my tutor. She was my tutor, um, Andrea Pohl, who's an equine sports massage therapist, among many other skills. Um, I'm going to introduce her and she can explain all the things that she does rather than me write, writing down this list and, uh, and going through that. So without further ado, I'm very, very excited and pleased to, um, to bring in Andrea. Here we go. Good evening, everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but I do apologise for my lateness, having been stuck on the M5. <laughs> but uh, the M5 is a bit of a lawn to itself, I'm afraid. Um, as Ronnie said, um, my name's Andrea Pohl. I, um, so I've always been around horses, I guess, um, ever since quite young really typical pony club kid you know racing around on welsh fat ponies falling off horses coming coming home before me 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 for carrying carrying myself very bedraggled behind me and i guess when i was younger you, you know the only thing you could ever do was when you went into the horse industry was to be a groom or to be an instructor or or you know just you just didn't really know what you were going to do um and I didn't fancy any of that, to be honest with you. Um, so I just sort of pulled it out. But I knew I didn't want to be in an office environment. Or if I was going to be in an office environment, I wanted to be in an environment which mixed the two up. So I sort of, sort of started in, in a totally different industry, really, believe it or not. I started off in horticulture. <laughs> Um, and I still have a love of plants, even though I can't keep house plants alive. To this day, I can still kill any house plant, and I really enjoyed that. And then that led me into leisure, where I did um, did leisure management, etc. In university, and I worked for um, for a couple of city councils, uh, just just working in events and managing facilities, etc. But I still always always had a love of of horses, etc. And I guess it all sort of started when I met a gentleman called uh, Bob Livock, who was an equine dentist, and he always said, oh, girls can't do horses' teeth. <laughs> well, I was a bit of a red rag to a bull, really. So um, that's how I basically started. So riding horses, um, still working, and uh, I sort of hung around with Bob a little bit, got thrown up a few walls, dragged around stables, etc. And uh, then I went um, went to America where most of the dentists went at that time with my dear friend uh, Chris Morris who's now um, I think semi-retired from horse dentistry which he should be because his uh, elbows are a bit are a bit broken now um, so I trained so I trained really as a horse dentist I was very very lucky I got to work with um, a gentleman called Todd Williams in Canada and uh, became involved with the industry in this country and uh, uh, myself and, and another team of people we were fundamental in getting the worldwide association of equine dentistry approved uh by the british equine veterinary association and rcvs as um trainers for advanced dentistry unfortunately dentistry then was very much hand tools there was none of this fancy sort of motorized equipment and everything and <clears throat> i hate to have to say that it's it, it is a really really difficult profession and um uh, uh, maybe Bob was right, you know, maybe maybe it isn't really for girls. <laughs> it certainly wasn't for me because I sort of fell apart, to be honest with you. And then I took the opportunity um, as my godfather was a gentleman called Ronnie Longford, who, oh, bless him, has now passed away at the age of 100 uh, a couple of years ago. And he was trained by John Mc McTimoney. Um, he went to John McTimoney one day to have his shoulder fixed after a um, after a point to point accident, and uh, he said to him, "Well, I reckon I could do this." And John McTimoney said, "All right, you can, can you?" So um, yes, yeah, so he went and he worked for John McTimoney, and then he worked and learned his craft along him. And then when John had a um, heart attack, Ronnie then. Um, drove him round and I suppose he became probably the first backman or one of the first backmen you know and he was quite fundamental in changing changing the industry really you know and people used to queue up for miles with him he used to have a clinic in Pebworth and people used to queue around the block with their horses and trailers etc um 
I mean, an amazing man. Well, well before his time, used forradic machines, used um, <clears throat> used uh, ultrasound, you know, on horses. A lot of uh, old fashioned vets, as I like to call them, came on board with him, and. Um, as, and alongside Sherry Scott, another dear friend of mine who's um, a physiotherapy, I think they obviously paved the way for for the rest of us, really. I think I was really lucky in that I caught Ronnie sort of at the end of his career, really, when he wasn't gallivanting all over the world. He used to get flown to Barbados, to Ireland, to France, to Italy, which, in you know, in, in those times was was, was a big thing, you know. Um, and I caught him at the end of my career, and I was very, very lucky in that he took me under under his wing, and um, I studied I studied the McTimney Corley technique in Oxford Brooks with um, with Sheila Hudson, and uh, passed and and did the veterinary manipulation course with her as well, um, <clears throat> and I then backed that up so. I've got, you know, so I, I did my human qualifications and my then my veterinary qualifications, and then I did um, my uh, veterinary di veterinary physio diploma. When I was doing all this, these degrees, these MSc degrees, etc., they they didn't exist, you know, Ronnie. They were just it was just you, you know you did what you were out there. I was very very lucky. I had had access to Mary Bromley, who still scared me to the day she died. Bless her, and Sherry Scott, who was um, <clears throat> still very active in the industry in her eighties. Uh, wonderful, wonderful lady. Quite ditzy, but very very knowledgeable, and and again a pioneer in the field, really. So <clears throat> I've been really really lucky in that I've been managed to, you know, take up with these people, and then actually. Um, you know, go forward and uh, and uh, build my own practice. So I've got sort of the advanced equine dentistry certificate and then I, you know, I'm human trained and veterinary trained as well. Um, I don't do humans now. Very rarely do I do humans. However, I have just done um, a human uh, sports massage com um, qualification, to be honest, just to just to, you know, to, to just to do something and to top my brain up, and and also to fix my poor husband David, who's always moaning about his neck and his shoulders and his back. So, but I only treat <laughs> friends and family, you know, and uh, occasionally the odd horse owner that sort of hobbles towards me. But my general advice is, you need to put ice on that and go find somebody who knows what they're doing. So, <laughs> because it's a long time since I put my hand on a human, on a human. So yeah, so that that's a bit that's a bit of my background. But I mean, I've had a wonderful time, Ronnie. Horses have been very very good to me. I've been very very lucky. I've, I've worked in Dubai. I've worked in um, worked in Ireland. I, I spent a long time in Canada with a wonderful lady, Leslie Kerfoot, who was a big pioneer in Canada um, in in physiotherapy. She originally from Glasgow, and now she lives in um, she lives in the summer in. Cochrane and I think they then go up to Vancouver Island for the winter because it's a bit kinder to them so and her and her husband Duncan who did a lot of round pen work and did um, he was very friendly with the late and great Tom Dorrance so I learned quite a lot about I hate to say it natural horsemanship but I learned quite a lot about horsemanship just hanging around with them really and working out you know just how horses work nothing special about horses they're just they're just horses, really. <laughs> they, they were, you know, they work on a different plane to us. I think their instincts are far more honed in. I think because of the pace of our life, um, we've lost a lot of a lot of that. You know, a lot of our um, instinct and a lot of our empathy as well. Like you know, people people are very bogged down with life now, whereas horses are just horses. They do get that bogged down. They tend to carry baggage from one owner to another. You know, they they tend to get moved about. There's not many horses who are lucky enough to stick with one person all their life, are they? You know, so mm. I think when you take one on, you take on what's what's gone on before almost. But that's the same with people, isn't it? You know, you, you meet friends and they come with baggage. Everything comes with baggage, really. So... So for me, they've been very good to me and they're very, very special in my life. Um, <clears throat> I've got one horse, Mr. Peter Fincher, my fat cob, who I love, who I bought off one of my clients. And I said to her, you ever sell this horse, I buy him off you. He came up for sale <laughs> to a friend's livery yard. I was looking for another horse and um, 
quite by fluke, um, a gentleman, a uh, farrier I knew, I said, Tom, do you, do you know this horse of Beth has on her website? He said, you know who that is? That's Peter Fincher. No, I said, Louise would never sell Peter Fincher. She says, Peter Fincher. So I rang Beth, who was gallivanting in the States for a week, and I said, um, do me a favour, when he comes home, when he come home on Saturday, check he's got four legs. And she rang me on the Sunday, she said, yeah, he's got four legs, sent me a video, and I said, I'd buy him. And that was it. So uh, I did everything that you shouldn't do. <laughs> buy a horse without vetting, I suppose, without looking at it. But he is, he's my mate. He's wonderful. He's a, he's a lovely horse. Um, we're quite well suited. We're both as bonkers as each other. But he's, yeah, he's really special. And I use him, um, I use him and uh, my old horse, Fion, we, we used to use for students to teach, to teach equine massage. So, um, yeah, they're quite special to me. And um, and I think what I really love about it is that is that we're always learning. We all still make mistakes, um, and we just have to keep trying. And we have to we have to learn off them, and they have to learn off us. But there's nothing more rewarding when you finish work and you turn around and they look at you, and you know you know they say thank you. And I think the horses that I do regularly on on the big racing yards, they all know who I am. They, you know, they uh, some of them are a bit, you know, a bit, you know, a bit, a bit fresh and a bit, you know, you got to be careful around. But the majority, oh, they, they're just fab. I just love them, really. <laughs> I should, I just love them, and I'm far too soft for working in racing and all that sort of industry. But they've been good to me, and um, I don't regret. I don't regret having done what I've done. It's a tough industry. It's it, it's hard. Um, I think it's changed phenomenally. It's changed phenomenally over the years. Um, I think there's a, a lack of what I would call old nags men or old nags women, perhaps, if I'm going to be politically correct around. Um, and it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a shame, but we do our best for the horses and, and that's what I try and do every day. You get off days, same as everybody else. You know, everybody else does. But that's what that's what I do. And um, they give me a lot. They keep me on the straight and narrow. If I'm ever stressed about anything, or if I'm ever worried about anything, then I go, I work, and suddenly everything seems all right again. So they they give me an awful lot, Ronnie, and I will always be thankful for that. Oh wow. <laughs> You just rem you reminded me of of um, what you told us on when we first started on the massage course. You know a few of your um, how you got your skills and your your knowledge, but I'd forgotten. And as you were going through it, I thought, "Crikey, she's done so much. She's done so much." I've been um, very lucky. I've just been very very lucky, and I've just been on a path which has put me in touch with you know with with lots of very very good people it's you know it's put me in, in touch with people I think hmm maybe not but it's also put me in touch with you know a lot of people who have been very very good to me and they've seen something in me that I haven't seen in myself and I still don't see myself I'm just I'm just Andrea Pole. I'm I'm nothing special. I just go out and I do my job every day. And, you know, I hope I do it to the best of my abilities. There are some times I never want to see another horse, I've got to be honest, which means I need to get off the world for a week. Um, you get a bit horsed out. But at the end of the day, I'm like any other horse owner when I pack up. I just want to go and pack me pony and pack me pony, walk me dogs. You know, yesterday I finished a bit early, went down the yard jumped on in my jeans and my job and my boots and whizzed around the block you know because I, that's where I needed to be at that particular time but um yeah they're, 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 they're special but I've been very very lucky I've been very lucky indeed and you know I you know I'm just thankful really that I've met the people that I have and they've and they've touched my life so and I hope that's what we try and do through the teaching as well is just you know touch people's lives maybe and perhaps put them on a path that opens up new doors for them um might just increase their knowledge and their thinking about horses and and lots of people who come on our courses say oh i've never thought about that before and you know and i always say you'll never look at a horse again in the same way you know um 
and that's that's what we hope to do really and i've got a brilliant team around me i've got paul center and, and rosie and jackie and and my husband david who was mr fix it who came and found you ronnie when you went the wrong way at the m6 that first day <laughs> that was so that was so funny where are you silverstone silverstone that, that, it was i was so pleased <laughs> why <laughs> So I'll, I'll, I'll just explain to people. So um, obviously, Andrea is my was my tutor, and that's how that's how we met. Um, I was looking for something to do alongside with the communication because when I do the communication, it's not you you won't have the same clients each month. It's not a monthly thing. I'd see them every maybe six months or yearly. Um, so although I have regular clients, it wouldn't be the same ones. And I was looking for something else to do alongside. Um, and also at the beginning when I was looking, it was because I wanted um, I wanted to be recognized because I don't have a piece of paper for the animal communication because I'm, I'm self-taught. Um, I thought I might need something mm. so people would, would um, see me as, as a real person, as a real, you know, somebody that's doing a job um so I, I started to look at things and I did look at other massage courses that was way before I, I joined yours um but nothing sort of grabbed me and I kept thinking why why am I doing this is it because I I want to fit in or do yeah. I really want to do it and at the time my answer was no it's because I, I feel I need I wanted to fit in yeah and there's also equine communication courses but then I thought well why would I want to do somebody else's course just mm. to have a piece of paper to yeah. say I can do what I already do now yeah. so I, I knocked that on and says no thank you, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah. and then I was thinking is that my ego or is that because I don't need to do it and I thought no it's because I don't need to because I wouldn't do the way they showed me I'd do the way that I feel that I should be doing yeah. it yeah um, but then eventually I thought, actually, I would like to do something else. And your course came up. And I don't know why. So it just it just attracted me. And then obviously I enrolled. But <laughs> the first the first weekend that I was supposed to be on Ross at Ross on Y, which is where the course was <laughs> held, I'd put I'd put the address into my sat nav. And I put it in there and thought, right, I get up at four in the morning and just press go and I, it's all in there. And so in the morning I got up, got in the car and it was dark. <laughs> That's my excuse. And I pressed um, maps and w to what I thought was the right address. And I set off on my journey and I was so excited. And I was thinking, I hope I'm going the right way. I'm sure I have. It's in the sat nav. And um, anyway, I had the radio on and I was driving along. And two hours later, I was thinking, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going in the right direction. <laughs> and then I pulled over and I looked at my at, my, at the um, the map and it taken me to the wrong place. And I was two hours in the wrong direction. <laughs> So I was I was trying to ring Andrea or, or the girls on the course because we'd all sort of linked up before mm. we started and saying, I, I'm, I'm lost. I'm totally in the wrong place. <laughs> and they were going, don't worry, how far are you? I went, well, I'm two hours in the wrong direction. So it's mm. going to take me two hours just to get back to where I started. And uh, I remember rolling into the classroom <laughs> but ringing Dave. David came to get me, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, good old David. Bless him. Bless him. <laughs> Long suffering David. <laughs> oh, and I all I could think of, oh my God, it's my first weekend. What are they going to think of me? And uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was funny. It was funny. It was so but funny. I think you might got a cheer when he came in. Way. I did. I did. Ah, where have you been? <laughs> Everybody made me. Um, you made me feel at home, and you just said, "Sit down. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll yeah. introduce you later." Um, yes. But everybody was lovely. I I feel so lucky that first of all, you was my tutor because I think you're an amazing woman. Oh, thank um, you. And you come across your. Um, you have a sense of humor and a warmth to you, but you expect us to do our work, and and you know you you um, you don't suffer fools gladly, and if no, we don't do true. it, you mm. tell us. Um, so I think we got the best of both worlds with that, and I was so lucky that everybody on that 
that course was um was lovely and I remember that to this day so I remember your warmth and I remember remember everybody that was on the course and I was so lucky yeah. that I was with all those guys because I just I loved it and I couldn't wait for the next time that we came down and I still miss it I still miss um coming down to Ross and Y because it's yeah, such a beautiful part of the world as well isn't it you know it is it's, uh, it's yeah, yeah yeah no I think we enjoy what we do we um yeah, yeah, we've sort of wandered off the path a little bit and we decided that maybe we were going to make it a bit more um, because you don't actually need any qualifications to practice equine massage in this country, um, which is a bit bizarre, really. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you can do a course and uh, you can get insured and you can join an organisation. And uh, we tend to um, we're not we're not approved. We're, we're not. Um, they're not an accreditation body, but we tend to work quite closely with IAT, who are very, very, um, who are very, very supportive of us. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it it just seems to work really. So we we try and produce our students to a level three standard, which I think would probably be the equivalent to an A level. But as you know, it's quite intensive. It's quite a quite a lot of work. It's a lot of case studies, etc. Um, practical and theoretical exam. It's changed a bit. We've had to adapt it, you know, to make it uh, to, you know, just to go with the times, really. And you, you find you think, well, that didn't work very well. Oh, but that worked very well. Um, and you, you go from there, really. Um, so we did we did try and we did decide that maybe we were going to make it a little bit more official at one point and, and maybe um, have it um, accredited by a professional body but unfortunately that hasn't worked out and it what it tended to do is it was it was so much paperwork it was just uh, just an awful lot of work and I felt it took away an awful lot from the course and um, it didn't mean anything the qualification on top didn't actually mean anything it doesn't you know it doesn't make you a good therapist I think we, we all chase pieces of paper now everybody wants a piece of paper and everybody maybe needs a piece of paper but it doesn't make you a good therapist I think um, my, my firm belief is is once you become ego led with it and you know you you sort of you know become ego ego led and you think you're the best and there's nothing else to learn or you know you get you know quite angry about things I, I think you lose the gift and it is a gift and um and I think I'm quite straight with my students I can teach them um what to look for I can teach them a routine I can teach them you know you know what we what I know and Paul can do his bit and Rosie can do her bit but I think it, it's just time and experience and you have to be humble you have to be very very humble about what you do you have to be humble you know you can have every you can have all the qualifications and pieces of paper in the in the world but actually if you haven't got the feel and you haven't got the empathy and you can't can't almost work work with your gift then I think you know I you're not going to fail I'm not going to say you're going to fail but it's but it's a difference in being you know reasonable and good and I think I think it's very difficult because as I've said previously we work in um, a fast world and you know and there's a lot of jostling for position and there's you know a lot of this and a lot of that out there and we don't we don't trust you know we don't trust i'm going to sound really fluffy bunny now we don't trust in the universe you know we don't um you know we we don't live on positive vibes and things and uh and i find i try and keep away from i think that's that's the biggest thing i've learned over the last couple of years is to, is to is to keep away from that sort of environment and that and, and those sort of people and I've sort of almost shut down I suppose and I just have a very very tight circle of friends now and you know lots of acquaintances um but people I can rely on and people who know me and I know them you know and we all work and, and play together and 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 that's how we are um I don't I'm glad I am at the towards the end of my career rather than starting my career I have to say but I also say about that in the world in general, I'm glad I'm sort of the age I am. I'm not going to disclose that one day. <laughs> <laughs> I am a lady with certain Could you just tell me, just tell me. <laughs> First 
thing I say to my client, to my students, I am a lady of a certain age and sometimes I go off on tracks and I never know where I am and I never know where I came from. So bear with me. <laughs> and I can't remember everything. There's a lot of stuff in here, you know, a lot of stuff. For most of it, it's totally irrelevant. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of glad I'm the age I am. The world is changing and, you know, it's... Uh, it's a different place and I think it's really hard now to find positivity and lightness and, and maybe that maybe that's just be me being a bit pessimistic you know but um it's it's always you know it, it's just difficult and the teaching is becoming more difficult as well because um people are much more demanding now they they want everything on a plate you know they 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 just it, it's it's totally changed totally changed to how it was when i first started you know and it was and you know and it, i think it's quite sad really because you mentioned people like ronnie and sherry and mary and people go who and you say oh please you know you've just forgotten the people who sort of started the industry and things but i'm just in a bit of a maudlin mood at mood i suppose but it's but yeah, it's a totally different place now to how I started. And I'm afraid I just toddle on on now in my little day job and I do what I can do to my best abilities. And um, yeah, and it's, it, you know, it's, we've, we've had, a, we've had a, you know, it's, it's been a couple of tough years for everybody, I think, with COVID, etc. Yeah. But I think it's put us all back a step. And um, <clears throat> I think from my point of view, I'm very much sort of, whoa, now, and I'm a lot more... Phew, about it all you know it's um and i think i've had to be just just for self-preservation i suppose really um and i think you know the, the world has changed and people have changed and there are some lovely people out there but you know it's it, it's a hard it's a hard it's a hard job even the driving is hard you know you're up and down the motorways the driving is quick the you know, people are beeping and honking. Everybody wants to get somewhere fast. I've been in a position where I've got speeding points. I've at last got a driving license with no speeding points. <laughs> so I'm really, really careful. I'm 30. I'm one of those people that you go, why is she going 30? Well, there's a 30 limit and I don't want any more points. <laughs> so um, so it's it's just it's just a difficult industry and, and the whole of it makes it makes it difficult. Um horse owners are more have higher expectations. Um they are they you know there's much more technology available to horse owners now, there's much better diagnostics, etc. You know, and and sometimes, and people would shout at me. I would, I, I would, you know, I sometimes question the ethics of it all. You know, it's um, if a horse isn't sound in the field and can't be a proper horse, why would you be jabbing it and doing this and that because you want to go out and compete it? It's, it's not a good. Th I it doesn't it doesn't sit well. With yeah, me. yeah. It doesn't sit well with me, Ronnie. You know, and. And, and people think I'm hard and maybe it's because, you know, I've sort of come from hanging around farmers and everything, all, you know, all my life and everything, you know, but when horses are done, they're done. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I do think sometimes it's not, we're, we're not kind to them. We think we're being kind to them, but we're not being kind to them, you know, and it's, it's tough. It's a tough one, but... Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to live forever, don't they? Which we saw when we were in COVID, and everybody wants their animals to live forever, but none of us do, and neither do they. It's it's a hard it's a hard industry. It, it's it's tough. I think it's mentally draining as well. I'm not painting a good picture of it here. <laughs> <but> <laughs> So anybody that's thinking of starting working in the horse industry, yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't bother. We're working waiters on a night shift. Better pay. <laughs> And better working conditions. <laughs> and you don't get chapped fingers or stood on. Get, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get rubbing trapped and you don't get kicked. You don't get bitten and you don't get stuck on the M5. <laughs> or the but, M6, wherever you are, you know. You don't get stuck in all these diversions, which really stresses me out. Took me that extra hour to get home the other night because the roads were shut. You get so far and you say, so where do I go now? I'm at a T junction, and your sat nav is trying to take you back the way you go. Come from, and you're like, no, I can't go down there. So uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you think, oh, beam me up, Scotty. But and it's, no, and it's... Finish it? no, I probably wouldn't. I don't see myself retiring. 
I just see myself just sort of slowing down probably. Just just slipping away. Yeah, slipping away quietly. Well, maybe not quietly. <laughs> Yes, but I, it's I mean what you do is a really physical um it's a physical job that you're doing yeah. every day and that that takes its toll on your body as well yeah. as you know everything else and it's um and when you've been in it as long as you have you as you've just said you see you know the beginning stages when you first started mm. to where it is now and I think if you to- talk to most people in life regardless of what the 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 work is they'll have a similar um mm. story things are changing yes. yeah and yeah. and you definitely um people are getting patient they want yes they want results but they want quick results at yes. times as well i'm not talking about everybody no um, no no no, but they, no they absolutely. Want... some people are wonderful and they say if it needs time or yeah and, and we're not just talking about horses here Ronnie. we're just talking about life aren't we you know yes yeah. and, you know yeah but you are right sorry it's hard to interrupt but you are right people no are no no it's fine patient. um yeah so people um so i think if they have horses that they compete with or they they want you know they have a, a goal and it's always there sometimes that gets in the way um and and sometimes they need somebody like yourself just to say well hang on a minute you know that's mm. all well and good but actually this is going to take this amount of time yeah and then you yeah. then you have to reevaluate and yeah. and see what happens or mm. maybe your your horse needs some time out because mm. you can have horses that still perform and still get to the peak but it doesn't mean to say that they're always enjoying it you know, no, they they, they can get to a point where they start yeah. to switch off because they've done that bit, they've re- reached that level, and then they're getting pushed to go to another level, mm. and then mm. to another level, and it's almost um, like, well, hang on a minute, mm. you know, you said you'd be happy yeah. with that, now you're wanting that, yeah, um, yes, yeah, and. To be fair, they get they, they see the horses doing well and they think, oh my god, my horse loves this, and they do. But mm. sometimes they get to a point where I did, but actually, and then they start yes. to break down uh, mentally yeah. and physically yes. as well. Yeah, they do, they do, and and I think, and I think you know, I often see um, horses, especially comp- you know, some competition horses. I'm not saying all competition horses, but sometimes you come across horses, you know, and you you know, it's not loving life, you know, it's it's they shut down, um, the eyes shut down, you know, the courts shut down, and and they're just their auras are different, they feel different. Sometimes they smell a little bit different as well, you know, and it's. Um, and you just and you just know and then of course it's a very delicate um act but if, you, if you're dealing with, with with horse owners who've just got the one horse or a couple of horses then it's you know you can you can discuss things and chat chat about things and say maybe have you looked at this maybe have you thought about that etc but i mean with the competition horses then they're there to do a job and um mm. you know they they have to do it you know and that's it and sometimes you know it breaks my heart a little bit and uh, i used to many years ago you know i'd come home and i'd be really quite upset and tearful um but now you know now i sort of tend to say it as it is i say this is you know you need to stop with this blah 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 i put it in my book and I know I put it in my book. If they choose to take notice, then that's up to them. Um, it, but it's hard. But then I always think when I've been there and I've shown it some kindness and I've shown it some some care and some empathy and I've and I've done my best and and hopefully you know that's that goes that goes a long way. You know, mm. it's um it's it's a funny old thing. And I think some and you have to have the ability as well to to come home and shut the door and, and and leave it there as well it's not all skipping around paddocks with ponies you know <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> and I and I can always remember us having the chat you know that I'd love to be able to do what you do um and you know I said oh, I'd love to be able to communicate and, and everything but um and you always making the make it saying but you already do that you know you, you do, do to your hands and and yeah maybe right and you know what maybe i wouldn't want to hear what they've got to say <laughs> get off shut up 
<laughs> I, I said somebody said to me about having a having a communicator to Peter Fincher. I said, I don't want to know what he's got to say. I already know what he thinks. He thinks I'm bonkers. I don't need to know that. <laughs> Oh, I do need the way he looks at me. He looks at me and goes, "Really? <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't, even, I don't know what he's got to say. No, no, because I know what he's going to say. <laughs> really, but, <Madame? laughs> but you do, you um, yeah, but you don't just communicate. You say you communicate, um, obviously with through your work, through your hands, but you're intuitive. So it, it might not be that you hear words but you mm. you definitely pick up on the horses you you know you you just that you feel their energy and 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 this you said you get a smell I've never had that you see so what's oh, the, right. what's the smell that you get it's sometimes especially if something's ill they just they just don't uh, smell right they just yeah. don't smell right I think that I think the eye is probably the biggest giveaway really yeah, the eyes are amazing. I mean, they say, don't they? They're the openings to the soul, really. And and the eyes are the, are the main thing, really. You know, and um, and of course, you know, coat. If they're not if they're not feeling right, they 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 look rubbish because yeah. they don't feel well. You know, it's um, it's an outward sign, isn't it? Um, but hey, you know. You just got to do your best, haven't you? You know, and and mm -hmm. I, you know, I've got some wonderful horse owners. I've got some wonderful clients who I've had for many, many, many years, and you know, I'm very, very fond of them. Some of them have become really good friends, you know. And uh, when you, you know, and, and one lady sent me a um, a message today about um, about a horse, and uh, unfortunately, her horse has been been retired due to injury. And she said, "Oh, I do miss out chats, Andrea." And I thought, "Oh, that's really." Nice nice you know that's so nice thank you for that and uh you know it's um yeah i got some lovely horses and i've got some lovely owners and um and people say are, are you stopping are you taking on any more and i i just take on what comes my way but i do get quite stressed because i've only got so many hours in the day and i can't get to everybody you know i think that's the other thing that's quite stressful is that you know, if I if I had twenty five o'clock at five pm appointments, that would be fine. But I don't have twenty. <laughs> I got four in a week. <laughs> you no, know, once they're gone, they're gone. You know, um, but no. And I like to think, you know, and I like to keep in touch with my clients as well. You know, if something's not quite right, you know, I like them to get feedback, etc. So I don't like to be a sort of um hit and run merchant. You know, in taking mm -hmm. money. On. I like it to be a relationship that can be grown on over the years and then you get to know the farriers and the veterinarians so you know we're all working as a, as a team really just, uh, yeah. just, just to help the horses and and I hope from a student point of view that's you know that's that's what we portray and and I'm sure some students come and they they don't use it as, as a business they use it for themselves a lot of them use it for their own knowledge and they don't mm. really want to want to do anything with it which is brilliant it is fine i mean we're just almost a platform for people to, to to open the door and if you wish to step through it that's fine and if you don't wish to step through it then then that's also fine i think um yeah. i'd like to think our courses are fun i think everybody comes along and enjoys um and we we all have good fun and and we always love love everybody we love to see everybody and um and I hope, you know, I hope it's a good learning experience as, as well for everybody. And, and as I say, we don't know everything. None of us know everything. So we get the occasional curveball and you think, really? Oh, I don't know. You know, so you have to zip home and have a look and, you know, go through all the, bo all the books. <laughs> all the books behind me. Um, I'm a bit of a book person rather than a tinternet person, but that's my age, I think. Um, but... Um, yeah yeah it's it is it is what it is isn't it to to uh mm -hmm. to say what a good friend of mine says it is what it is but i do love what i do um i might be taking a break from the teaching i'm not sure yet um we've got a, a fresh course starting in february and we're really really looking forward to meeting everybody and we're all excited and uh we've put you know putting together all the binders and you know you know the famous binders about that big and i hand them out and say don't panic <laughs> everybody's sitting there looking like rabbits in the head like oh my god but
But what I always love is is the majority of people come to us and they do, and they don't know anything, and and when we finish them, for, you know, in six months, oh, they've grown so much, you know, they've grown and they've developed and they've just, you know, it, it's just lovely to see people. It's lovely to see people and it's lovely to see people develop and develop in their confidence and develop in their skills and, and just see the group, you know, f you know, come together as friends and some people stay friends forever. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But I think I might be, I think we might be taking a break just just because we're, you know, we just, we just need to take a step back a bit. And I think, mm. And reevaluate everything and where we're going. Yeah, because there's two, what's two, this space? <laughs> this space. Because mm. you've got two people that weren't um, uh, Paul and Rosie. They, yes. they're, they're new people that I haven't met. I mean, I've seen them on your on your page, but I haven't actually met them in person because yes. they weren't there then. Um, but I loved loved the course. Never, all yeah. the girls um, that was on ours. We all loved it. Uh, we, yeah. we we liked going out for a meal in the evening. That I was know, fun. I know, I and, know, I and... know, I know. <laughs> yes, we've had we had a group of a group of ladies, ladies on one of our courses, and I always remember the, her coming in on the Sunday. There was one particular lady. I'm hanging like a bat. Was her words? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> As she proceeded to put her head on the desk for the rest of the, the rest of the day, I am hanging like a bat. <laughs> I, I've never heard that expression before. No, neither would I. <laughs> Just thought it was so funny, you know. And we give people, you know, we have little nicknames for everybody because I am rubbish with names. I have to say to Paul and Rose, which one is this then? And they say, oh, you know, so and so. And I think, who are you talking about? Um, and then they say, oh, you know, so-and-so got a rucksack. And I go, ah, right, okay. And then I have to sort of remember things. So our nicknames are never in a derogatory way. They're just because I'm daft and I can't remember people's names. <laughs> and we always tell people what we call them. We always tell people what we call them. I mean, when poor, unfortunate lady was absolutely wonderful, wonderful student, wonderful personality, she slipped in the kitchen one day and managed to throw a pop, uh, uh, pop noodle over her head. So she was she was christened noodles, and that was the end of that. <laughs> she was noodles for the rest of the course. Um, we get the occasional man on the course, and bless them. Bless them. They have to pull up with all the mad women, don't they? But they all, they all fit in, and... You know, we all have a wonderful, wonderful gentleman, Carl Schmidt from Cornwall. Oh, he was just just such a wonderful man and really good fun and oh it's just just great and and so many stories to tell and that's what I love about it as well so many stories that people have and it's just a merging of, of people and of, of of talk and of, of experiences it's it's really it's really good fun and I think sometimes you know and this is what we found when we we dabbled a little bit once you go down the sort of official route you lose that element because we're all chasing time chasing paper chasing this chasing that and it's not what it's not what we do it's not what it's not what i do and, and it's not what it's not what we do well we 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 teach we teach we teach well as i said paul is a wonderful horseman rosie's you know brilliant horsewoman and um you know we, we're a good team and we just merge and we get on and we know our jobs and mm -hmm. uh, you know we you know we love it so uh so hopefully once we get a little bit back onto the track that we want it want to be then we'll be we'll kick start and off we'll go again i remember you always saying it doesn't matter how many times i show you a skill um um a tool a skill or show you a technique mm -hmm. Um, it's it's just tools in a box at the end of the day. It's, yeah, it takes yeah. you to go out and practice because that is going to be your learning. Yes, and, and I always yeah. remember you saying that, and it's very true about everything. Mm. Uh, you get a p. I mean, if you get a piece of paper to say this is what you do, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're qualified in that. It means you've qualified, but you're not a qualified yes. person in that because yes. you need to go out yeah. and practice. And the only way you do that is working on the horses, mm -hmm. and that's where the experience comes from. Yes, and it changes yeah. as you change. Yeah. So yes, the, the field the field changes, the the intuitive side of you kicks in. Yeah. 
Yes, um, yeah. but when you're first doing it, you're doing it as uh, as you were taught, or yes, you absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and for me personally, I mean, I loved my course, and um, I, yeah, I, I loved it, and I would do it again. But I haven't used it as much as I should do, and that's mm-hmm. probably because most people want me to do communication. So even though yes. I say yes. that that's what I do, yes. yeah, but then I don't push that side. Because mm-hmm. maybe my comfort zone is what I already know. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I still would not have missed that because no. I met you. I met the people mm-hmm. on the course, and and some of the girls have gone off to do uh, massage and use it. You know, they use it all the time. Yes, and they've got all these yeah. skills as well. Yes, and I love yeah. seeing their updates and and what they're doing with the horses and the yes. work. Yeah. Um. So yes. it wasn't a waste of time or money for me because I I just. You know, I, it, my heart is still glowing from the time. Oh, that's um, lovely! Thank you so much. That's, because, that means no, a lot. Actually. actually, it does because yeah. you you teach and you teach in, you teach in a way that, to me, is the way that you should be taught. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about interacting with an, another person. It's showing them. It's guiding them, watching them grow. But you don't uh, wrap it up in cotton wool, and you don't call it different names. It is what it is. Mm. there's only you know you you can put a ribbon around it and call it that but actually it's still that at the end of the day yeah and that's what you teach um but you do say you know it's up to you how far you want to go with this yes you could go you could go a long way or you could just use it for your own horse or you could just you know um you didn't you didn't uh make it something it isn't you you yeah you gave it as it is Yes, yeah, yeah. But I would like to think that that's the sort of person I am anyway. I'm, yeah. um, I, you know, I'm sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, um, I think, I think we've had a, a, a for, for different reasons and things lately, you know, we've had a bit of a kick in, but, and it's been, and it's been quite tough and we've had to deal with, you know, different sort of circumstances, you know, not, not just me, but everybody in the world, you know, and I think mm. it just makes you sit back and think and, but I'm quite straightforward. I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't like to fluffy bunny it up, you know, and, and there isn't anybody who loves their animals more than me, you know, I mean, you've got to ask David, I mean, the house is full of the dratted things, you know, um, and, uh, you know, and as he says, he comes at the bottom of the pile, you know, after all the dogs, Peter Fincher, the cat, yeah, <laughs> or anybody and, else's and, and rightly so, <laughs> yes, yeah, um, but it's, you know, it's. I I I hope that it's a bit of sanity in which is a bit of a mad world, and I really hope that the people who come really enjoy the courses and 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 take take a lot from them. But I also hope that that's what happens when I visit horses. You know, I I want it to be um a pleasant experience for the horse and and for the owner you know it's um and today's been a pretty pretty tough day i've had to move around some you know some quite big horses but you're exactly right in what you said earlier ronnie i i am not the same therapist now as i was x amount of years ago totally changed the way i do things totally the way i'm still very much um i think a ronnie longford person in that i always start from the front to make my way back um everything is always checked from front to back regardless of of what issue it has um regardless of of what i've come to see it for um unless i've gone to see something specific you know like um like a like an injury that might need lasering or ultrasound but it's got to be for me it's got to be the whole horse it has to be the whole horse and that's what's important because they're just quite complex creatures and they're the ridiculously made creatures they've got this big body and four silly little legs you know and uh, yes yeah they are they are amazing they are so amazing and of course they were never meant to be as big as they are and some of them are big and some of them are big you know and then we wonder why they break because they're not put together the best no. way, <laughs> you know. No, you see some of these um, mm. these cross country horses that've been bred for that, and their mm. shoulders yeah. are, are like huge. Yes, and yeah. then they, they've got the tiniest back. Yeah, and and a little rump. Yeah, and all the power is at the front end. Yes, yeah. Which actually, you you want some of that at the back. 
yeah you do i mean it all has to come from the back i mean if it doesn't come from the back you know it's you, you're never they're going to you know that that is that is probably one of the um biggest things you know that to, to try and get horses and, and horse horse owners to understand you know the power has to come from the back the energy has to come from the back and it has to be allowed to come through in order for it to come through to the front you know the core has to lift so that's really important the core strength and then the front end can can come up they already they're already stuck with 65 percent weight on their forehand so they don't really want to be pulling along any more weight on it you know so it's mm -hmm. um, it's a case of really just it's almost like a bicycle wheel i suppose to put it into you know into context um mm. and i'm not i would say i'm not the best um biomechanics expert in the world there are other people who are that is what they do and they are absolutely brilliant at it you know and um i i've got a I got a lot of respect for Dr. Hilary Clayton. I love her work. Russell Maguire um, was sent to, but I mean, amazing people, you know, they're, they're dedicated to what they do, to looking at information and to dissecting it. And that sometimes you think, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I've always known that because, you know, my grandfather said, or I've always done that because that's what I was taught. And that's always interesting because you think, well, that's nothing new. But actually, mm. to a lot of people, it 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 is new. Um, yeah. But now, of course, we demand scientific backup to everything as well, don't we? You know, somebody. So why do you do that? Well, I just do because because I just do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now it's oh well, it's because so and so so and so so and so said, and of course I understand that. I, I, of course I I understand that, and I understand the science behind it, and I understand you know why we have to take things back and and link for you know for information and for further developments i i do understand that but you know horses as i said at the beginning horses are just horses and horsemanship has not changed you know for for centuries it's um it's all they haven't really changed but what has changed is the way we keep them the way the demands we put on them mm. and and you know it's 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 just a different environment for them isn't it you know we keep them in small paddocks we lock them up in stables you know sometimes they don't get turnout because it's raining and it's wet and the fields are rubbish you know um you know we've got all sort of gadgets that people put on them you know because again sometimes they need to rush them for whatever reason you know maybe they need them you know sales they need them to look pretty within six weeks to sell them on and i'm not going to judge those people because you know they, they, that's their job and and that's what they do and uh and but you know th there's there's always a cost to everything there's always a cost mm. to everything and um and I, you know, and I'm in the same position. I'd love my horse to be, well, I think Pete would like to live out in the field and be fat as Larry. But then he also likes his house as well, you know. He's always sort of, oi, come on, come on, it's raining. And I can always remember I used to have a Connemara cross horse at one point um, uh, many years ago. And when it rained, that was coming in. It, it wasn't staying out. It wasn't staying out. It just used to jump over the fence and come in. And people say, oh, they like to be outside all the time sometimes they want to come in <laughs> that's funny and he wanted to come in <laughs> and he'd just come in down the yard and the girls would laugh because he'd stop at everybody's stable you know annoy everybody pinch some haylage or hay off whatever and shove up the floor and then into his house you know um so i think we just you know the, the whole the whole way we keep horses as well has changed and um and that affects them quite a lot as well and um and i think that's something we touch on on the course and it's sometimes things that people don't even think about you know mm. and it, it just opens up a different world really and um you know it's it's you know it's 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 just a different way we keep them and i'm not saying it's any worse or i'm not saying it's any better i'm not you know i'm not for them being out 24 7 i'm not for them being barefoot you know i i just you know whatever's whatever whatever environment that horse is in at that particular time then i i you know then i have to work with it and um mm. if i think it needs improving then I do. I don't think many of my clients use hay nets anymore. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> or if they 
they do their their, their hang hang at head height because that if they hang at head height it's sort of um it's it it's there's not much difference in the in the sort of lumbar area stretch as it is as if it's on the floor but but if any of my horse owners have got nets up there i look and they go oh yeah sorry <laughs> yeah always used to be really 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 high yeah, yeah, they did, they did, and we used to, they used to put the big hay racks on the walls, didn't they? Mm. And you, you'd, you'd check the hay over, and they'd be stood there eating like that, you know. It's, yeah. um, and there are still people who do that, you know, and um, and then it's just an education thing, isn't it? You mm. know, because I know just... somebody said, I mean, uh, if they was in the wild, they'd be picking berries and things off of bushes, and they do that, but it's not constant, is it? And it's, it's not, not that constant, no. it's not that pulling down. No action no. the whole time yes yeah. feeding route yes yeah yeah and of course they need to you know they need to put their heads in different positions because they need mm. to use different muscles um it's the same as i always say to people that the the best thing to keep your horse sound is to cross train it is to do a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of that and a bit of that and hack it and do this and that but unfortunately ronnie when you look at how dangerous the roads are especially in britain now mm. i mean you're taking your life in your hands you know if you go out on your on your horse now it, there's dreadful you, you know dreadful uh clips of of horses you know on, on social media being hit by cars and you know and, and the highway code has just been updated and things yeah. and and I think, you know, we can't be too hard on each other because, as I said, things have changed. And if it's not and if it's not safe to go out and out on the road, well, you've got no choice, have you? You know, you have to ride in your school and, and, and keep within boundaries that are going to keep you and your horse safe. So even though it's easy to say, oh, well, you know, but, 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 but it's you know it's actually circumstances have changed yeah. i think it'd be lovely to keep them out in big fields but then the big fields shouldn't be full of plush grass either should it you know <laughs> you, look at the, you know you look at the welsh ponies that live where i where i come from in the middle of wales and um you know in the in the winter they look blooming terrible especially when they're coming out of the winter and then in the summer they're fat as butter, but that's how they should be. And they're eating, and they're eating rubbish. Really, there's no good grass up there, you know. It's it's it's, it's rubbish. But then of course we bring them down here, and they're on really nice grass, and that's where we get the problems, you know. Um, but I don't think I I don't I don't like to judge. I don't like to judge because I think everybody has their own story, and everybody has a different um, experiences and everybody has their own reasons for doing things and that could be um outside factors looking in etc you know i i don't think it's um it's not fair it's not fair to judge because people mm. are in are all in different circumstances and you know some people would love their love their horses to all be in the herd but if your yard doesn't doesn't want that then no it's difficult you can't do isn't it, can it? You? yeah you know, it's difficult it's difficult and you, know? you have to do what you have to do the best with what you've got at the time yes i think it's just making people uh, and when i'm saying people i'm saying that to me too because you you become more aware through your own but it's through seeing mm. and through watching things and through understanding so it's i'm i'm you know i, I my journey's ongoing the whole time uh mm. it, with my own horse mm. um and in a, in an ideal world, you'd have like acres, acres of land that wasn't lush. Yes, <laughs> with yes. a shelter that could go in and come out of their yeah, own choice. Trees, nice trees, nice green trees, nice green trees no, yeah. no flies, no flies, yeah, no flies, so and, a, flies. and a little a little poo picking fairy that goes around in the middle of the night. Oh. Wouldn't that just be great? <laughs> but actually, actually, you know what? I I quite like poo picking because I I like it in the summer. My, I don't like it in the winter. <laughs> get down. Yeah, not through boggy fields. No, no, um, no. But when it's when it's frosty, it's like yay, yay <laughs> frosty, it's easy. frosty poo. <laughs> Yes, easy. It's easy. It is easy. Um, but you know, it's it's you know. It, I suppose in my in, in my dreams, if I was gonna be, gonna be anywhere ideal, I would move up to uh, to where dear friends of mine, Mark Walters and Nick Lawson are, and um, uh, just outside Bridge North, and they you know they they dressage 
they dress, you know, they dressage, um, dressage lads, and they're very good at what they do. But Mark also does a lot of sort of um, pony patting, as Nick calls it. But he does, you know, a bit of natural horsemanship, and they keep their horses in the herd. You know, they're dressage horses and everything. You know, they're all in mm -hmm. herds, and and that would be if I lived at that part of the world. That's where that's where my horse would live. But I'm quite happy where I am. I love my yard. The atmosphere is lovely. The horses are great, you know, and they've all, you know, they've all touched it. You know, they could, they all touch. They've all got their little friends and things. And so you just make the best of what you've got, don't you? Absolutely. From my perspective, from my work perspective, if, if, if you're happy and contented, as long as the horses have got feed, shelter, what they need, yeah. that's better than being somewhere if the if the carer their owner is mm. is anxious and and worried or you know a bit of a stress head then that that's the scenario they don't want they'd rather mm. not have that mm. no, um no. so at the choice of them it's it's a you know a relaxed person and where they are to to, to yeah freedom and, and mm. a stressy person definitely yeah. yeah um but tell people about your other side so you do a lot with horses, but you mm. also do singing and, <laughs> and theatre work. So I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Yes, yeah. I've, I've always sang, um, so I do quite a lot of singing. Not as much now as I used to, but I think COVID sort of put um, put put a stop to that. Really, you know, because all the singers spreading it about apparently. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do a lot of singing. Um, and I'm just getting back into it. We've got a few concerts planned, etc., and things. I've trained classically, and um, I still train with a good friend of mine, Josh, who's uh, down in Cardiff. He's um, involved with the Welsh College, etc., and things. And uh, we get together on the Tuesday and murder a few songs where we tend to laugh, really, and mess about. <laughs> And occasionally sing the sing the occasional song. I've just joined um, a wonderful little choir down the road, which was uh, set up in COVID for the benefits of of singing on mental health, and that's that's lovely, lovely group of ladies, and that's what that's good fun as well. And I suppose the other thing I do a lot with is um I do, is I is I ballroom dance with um a wonderful lady who's become one of my best friends, Miranda de Barra, who's, um, you know, you meet people in your life and you know you've you've known them before. Mm. And she's one of those people. She's one of those. It's a bit like Paul, Paul Centre, who, who you know, who, who sort of um, who, who works alongside me. You know, I haven't known Paul long, but Paul is, you know, Paul is very special to me. And uh, I've just, you know, I've known him before. There's some sort of little little line, isn't there, that connects yeah. you to some people but but I really love love my dance I love my dancing it's good fun um I get to teach some of the kids they all call me Miss Andrea which is really nice <laughs> very respectful but they all know I'm bonkers especially yesterday when I lost a leg warmer and uh, I rolled up my trousers and I still had it on <laughs> minutes I looked for this leg warmer ah it's all right it's all right kids don't panic it's still on my leg oh Miss Andrea sorry <laughs> But no, I, we have really good fun. We have really good fun. And, fr and tomorrow night is all, Friday night is always a marathon night. I start at quarter to five and I finish at about half past ten. So because we teach and dance right the way through. So and, you know, Ronnie, it's wonderful because different set of people. It's such a good thing for um, for your head. It's a good thing for me because I have to concentrate. I have to focus. It's really good physically. I'm not a gym person. And, um, yeah, and I just love it. I just love it. And I do my exams. I, I'm Hey, I'm only a baby ballroom dancer. I'm not, you know, I'm not one of these high-flying, strictly people, you know. But I just enjoy it. I just enjoy it. And, again, I enjoy... I enjoy seeing the, you know, the, the the kids and the adults come in and and develop, and it's it's just it's just a good thing to do, and and that's all I want to be really. I I always said when I was younger that that's all I wanted to do was um, make a difference. Was make a difference. Everybody makes a difference. Nobody ever thinks they do, but everybody makes a difference. But for me, I just wanted to feel that I'd made a difference, and I and I and I hope in some small way I have. I hope I've touched is touched some people's lives and some horses in my lives and animals, and I hope I have made a difference. 
hopefully not for the for for the for worse, but hopefully for the for wrong better. reasons. <laughs> Greg, here she comes again. Oh no, let but and that's all I wanted to do, really. And that's and, and I hope that when um when my time comes to sound really morbid, I hope that I can I can say, well, that was a life well lived, you know. Well, it's certainly full life, Andrea. Well, yeah, it, yeah, it is a bit hectic. Yeah. <laughs> but I yeah. like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I am well aware, Ronnie. There are far less years in front of me than there are in behind me. So. I'm not waiting around. I'm not waiting around. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not waiting around. <laughs> Kick on. <laughs> so when you come back from your break, yes. um, and you can start the, the massage course again. Yeah. So where what else are you what else would you like to do? So so if you could do anything, yes. what would be your um your plan, your mindset? Where would you like to go next? Um, I think I would like to, to do something, um, and teach, teach a lot, some of the techniques that Ronnie taught me, not from a chiropractic point of view, but from a, um, a spinal manipulation point of view and maybe a soft tissue manipulation point of view. Mm -hmm. It's just a little, a little seed, just really to carry on just to carry on his legacy really and to and to and to carry on the greatness of the man he was so humble didn't think he did anything really but just such a very very talented man and and very you know very fan very very fond of him and uh you know he's he, that was a life well lived because mm. so he, he took you under his wing didn't he? yeah he did yeah he yeah. was great i loved him to bits absolutely loved him we used to have great fun and uh we had a bit of a connection and i always knew what he was thinking and what he was gonna say and uh you know and he'd say something <laughs> say something when somebody walked away or something or other and he he's just like that always had that twinkle in his eye you know and <laughs> And, uh, um, you know, when he was younger, he was a ladies' man. And even even when he was older, he always had a cravat on and a shirt, you know, shirt and cravat or shirt and tie, you know, very um, very old-fashioned, you know. And, mm. uh, you know, he's just a wonderful man. But there were wonderful people. You know, I've met some wonderful vets in my time, you know, who were wonderful. Robert Morgan's a vet in Carmarthen, brilliant horse, horse vet you know down to earth jeff lane the head and neck surgery surgeon i mean brilliant brilliant man good friend of mine rod fisher um <laughs> not for the faint-hearted but hey you know fab fabulous fabulous people who've you know who really really helped helped and and been supportive on my on you know on on my particular journey really and and you know it's not been without hiccups and it's not been without mistakes and sometimes i think why did i do that why did I say that? But that's life, isn't it? As long as you yeah. learn from it and you move forward. And, uh, yeah, so I, I think even though it has its ups and downs, I've had more ups than I've had downs. And I hope that I've learned from the downs and I hope I will continue to go forward. Oh, I'm sure you will because you've got that enthusiasm and that passion for what you, what you believe in and what you do. Even when you get tired, you've, you've got that drive. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I was just thinking when, as you was talking about when you said about the old school types of people, yeah. you know, it's stuff that they've known for years and they don't mm. have to know the whys or explanations. They just know it works because mm. and the, and that's what they teach. And that's the sort of thing that you can't always write down in a, in a, in a book. Um, you can tell yeah. a story yes. that might help you, but it's, it's mm. not always techniques and stuff. And a friend of mine who, um, he lives in the states, and he he um, he came to help me with with toots actually, and uh, I think I was driving home one day, and the sun was setting, and I thought, oh, that's so pretty. So I was message messaging him and say, oh God, look at this. So I did a little video. It says, look at the look at the su the sun setting. It's yes. beautiful. And he went, Ronnie, we have sunshine here. I says, yeah, but it's not this one. This is one. This is our sunshine, <laughs> and. Um, he was, and he's he was near his, his dad, and yes. um, he goes, oh, I can't talk to you at the minute. I'm with my dad, and then um, and then he 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 rang me back, and he said, I've just explained what you do to my dad. Can you explain it to him? I've sort of explained it. Can you ex can you tell mm. him what you do? Now, 
um, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, but he comes from um, church going people. Yes. And yeah. his parents are, you know, the lovely people. I don't know mm. them, but the the church goers in the States. And and I thought, oh my crikey, how how do I explain how do I explain this in without making it sound, you know, hairy fairy? Yeah. And I was thinking, okay. So I tried to do it scientifically, sort of. Mm. And he explained, you know, about your intuition that we've all got yes, it. Yeah. And I was I was sat in the car talking to him for about 10 minutes, a good 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. And the, and then there was this quietness. And he, I could see him because he was on video phone. Mm. And he goes, yeah, he says, that's a bit like me when I was a rancher, when he was, a, you know, was a young yeah. man in the middle of the, you know, in the middle of the... Um, no man's land there was mm. snow six foot snow and it was just you and your horse and you mm. he said you had to have your horse trust you and vice mm. versa to survive and get home safely mm. so there was this there was this two-way communication without talking mm. and he basically said what I said in 15 minutes in a sentence and I went in a sentence yeah oh my god I said that's where your son gets his you know his skill yes. of horses because he's a yes. natural yeah um, yeah and this yeah, so so this was a guy that doesn't work around horses anymore, but it was part of his younger life. Mm -hmm. But it was that that relationship of you are equals because yes. you need each other, and mm. without each other and respect, you're not going to survive. And no. that was that was it in a nutshell. Yeah, um, I yeah. thought, wow, that one sentence yeah. says a lot. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Um, it does. And that and ta that taught me a lesson not to not to pre think what I think somebody's gonna yeah gonna, gonna say or think about yes. it yeah 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 and I think yeah, the other biggest inst thing you need to do is to is to trust your gut instinct as well is to yeah. really trust your gut instinct and um it, and that's quite difficult as well because again life's quite quite fast isn't it and and even though um you know I'm quite quite bubbly I suppose and gregarious etc um I I need I need quiet sometimes and I need to come home and I need to just be quiet and I need to just be or I need to just jump on the horse and you know like a, like yesterday and just went around and there was no huge chitty chat between us you know it was just come on Come on, pony, let's go. Yeah, all right. Let's go around the, yeah, let's go around the block, shall we? Yeah, why not? You know, and he's been, oh, what's that over there? Oh, what's that over there? Oh, Peter Finch, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> and and I, I I need that. I need that. I need to be able to to centre myself and to get off the planet sometimes because it is tough. It's it's a it's a tougher world out here. Mm. And in an ideal world, I think, oh, you know, it'd be, it'll be. I, I'd like. Sometimes I don't think I'd like to be able to go home to a desert island, you know, and have a bit of peace and then come out, do a bit and then go back on again, you know. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I have no idea. I, I have no idea where my future's going. I have no, and at the moment, I'm just, I've just put it out there and mm. I'm hoping I, 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 the, the path will open up for me. But you're enjoying what you, you're, you're, you're enjoying your life and it's a full yes. life. Yeah. And, that's that's all you can ask for at the minute isn't it yes yeah exactly exactly and and you know and i'm a great believer in you know um you never put in a position in this world that you can't you can't deal with um and you know you just you know sometimes you just have to sit there and you just sort of say i need a bit of guidance here and um and, and it'll come along and somebody will come along or something will come along and, and you, you just you just pick up the path again don't you you know you yeah. and no path is ever a wrong one so um i've just sort of yeah so i think changes are coming but i couldn't tell you what sort of change it is but um i think it is i think not i'm not going anywhere but i think maybe you know yeah you can uh, feel it can't you can feel yeah. it you, like you don't know what it is but you yeah. know there's yeah uh, i think and i think i think like you said because of the last few years i think that's happened uh, globally anyway as yeah. well it's not just yeah. it, not individuals it's it's across the board so that mm. one thing mm. affects the other yes. um and sometimes people get frightened because they like to know they like the comfort of knowing mm -hmm. but actually it's exciting uh, yeah. it can be exciting and it can be um liberating mm. 
as well. Mm. But it depends. I suppose it depends where you where you are, you know, yes. in, in your life at the time. Yeah. But. Well, yeah. Andrew, you know, it's been it's been really fabulous listening to you chatting away. Oh gosh, talking and rubbish. No, God, no. <laughs> talking rubbish, no, I, away. <laughs> oh, because no, it, you've got so many funny stories, and I know some of them you can't say because. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah. No. You can't share, but we. And I yeah. didn't even swear either, which is no, quite you, good for me. You did. <laughs> um, I bet you were thinking, "Oh, she doesn't swear. She doesn't swear." <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking that at all. I was thinking, "Oh my god, everybody's going to be able to see um, what." most people see when they when they hear you because this is you it's not yeah. you putting on a show this is you yeah, and yeah, yeah. This, I know you yeah, have your your quiet like you say when you need to yeah. switch off you'll just be quiet but yeah. that's still part of you too mm-hmm. um so thank you so much for no thank you Ronnie agreeing out of your busy time you. it's lovely to see you <laughs> and you know you're welcome anytime please oh please I come know visit. I know I will be don't you worry <laughs> no, please come visit please come visit it's uh yeah so thank you for asking me and uh and uh, if anybody anybody's tuning in thank you <laughs> <laughs> There, there was, there was, there was, was people that? yeah, no, there was, and there's a few, there's a, there's a, yeah, and a friend's uh, message, but these tend to get watched afterwards, so, so yeah, uh, and it'll go into a podcast, so I'll, I'll send you that, and you can. Oh um, no, I won't yeah. watch it. You know, I so never you... listen. I never listen to myself sing, and never <laughs> watch myself dance. I just, it, it's out there, and that's where it has to stay. I'm afraid. Oh. <laughs> So, I think, oh no, you didn't really say that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else you want to say before you go? No, no, just uh, God bless everybody, take care, and um, yeah, and be kind to everyone. Hmm. Oh, that's what kind. that's one thing I was going to say that, um, like you said, there's lots of different, uh, there's lots of people competing for the same thing. Mm. Uh, and there's new things coming along, yeah, and, yeah. and some which things go exciting, by there, yeah. which is exciting. And but if anybody ever says to me, oh, you know, there's so many massage people, there's so many this, that, and the other, and and I always say, um, from my understanding, there's enough work for everybody. But yes, if you there feel is. there isn't, that's yes. what you're going to attract because people will go to who they're attracted to, mm-hmm. and they yeah. might have the same uh, same work skills, but for yeah. them, that person is who they could maybe talk to, mm-hmm. and and that person brings something else. So. Yeah. Um, and it's about being respectful for for our fellow workers. Yes. We yeah. all have something that we bring to the table. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's it's about being respectful and honoring yeah. that person's skill. Yes. And like yeah. you know, you're you're a, a massage therapist. Um, I'm a massage therapist, but I am mm. no way you, and I do not have your skills. <laughs> so you can you can have two label, two uh, same label, yeah. but they're completely different people. Yeah. And yes. I think we yeah. have to remember that. Yeah. And like you said, yeah. you can have a piece of paper and a qualification that does not make you a good therapist. There's no. lots of other skills that you can't Absolutely. teach, and that's being a good listener good communicator with the with the animal and the person and have an empathy and compassion but also being able to be straight when it's needed yeah. yes and their skills that you have to have but also giving away that you'd want to receive yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because yeah. 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 you know if somebody talks to you in such a way you just switch off and you won't have them back again yes yeah so but you 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 are thankful for somebody that's honest mm. that comes from the heart and that's yes, what you listen yeah. to and that's what yes. I see when I when I look at you oh, and I've you. got I have another colleague who's who's a massage therapist mm. and she's the same but different yes um, she has that same that same feeling mm. uh, but mm. she's a lot quieter than you Andrea <laughs> That wouldn't take much, would it? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, so I'm going to pop you in there. Don't disappear because I want to have a quick chat before you go. And I'm just going okay. to say, so say bye to your friends. Bye, everyone. Remember, be kind. <laughs> be kind. Oh, my goodness. She is such an amazing lady. And uh, I, I truly mean that I loved my experience with Andrea and her teaching. And I will remember that. To the day I die, and that sounds very like cliche, but I will because she made such an impact on me as a person. And it's her heart; she has the most biggest heart. But she's not a bullshitter, 
and she doesn't t take fools lightly as well. So um, have an amazing weekend. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask Andrea, I can pass them on. I'll also um, send her details uh, at the bottom of this uh, stream so you can contact her directly. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you for listening and I shall talk to you soon. Thank you very much and bye for now.